Welcome to my YouTube channel, Pilates On Demand. My name is Lindsay. I'm a certified Pilates instructor. I've been teaching for quite some time now, and I'm going to be taking you through a beginner Pilates workout class today. So this is a really good workout if you have no idea about Pilates or what to do with it, or if you're looking for something just a little bit more relaxing today. We won't do too many reps, but it will be a full body workout. So you will leave feeling like you got the blood flowing, some good energy, and we'll really just set you up for your day or maybe your night and you'll relax into whatever space you are headed into. So for today's class, you will just pretty much need a mat or something to pad your knees, but otherwise you won't need any equipment at all. And we're going to get right into it. So let's begin in an all fours position. So meet me on hands and knees. Plant the hands under the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, and we'll be moving our back a little bit into a C shape. So move your chest forward and lift your hips up behind you. And then do the opposite, chest and hips come together. And move your hips and your chest apart. And move your chest and hips together. Good, as you move your chest and hips apart, take an inhale. We're stretching out the belly. And as you move your chest and hips together, take an exhale. Right here, we're stretching out the back. Let's go through a couple more. Inhale into the back bend. And exhale into the back stretch. And let's take two more right here. Breathe in. And breathe out. Inhale, lift your hips and your chest. Exhale, round your chest and your hips. And then find a flat back. So we're in a tabletop position. We'll move into a little bit of leg work. Let's start with this left leg. Flex your foot so your heel is moving out. And lift the left knee up just an inch off the floor. Now send your left leg straight back up behind you. Kneecap points down and back, and then lower the knee to a hover. The knee will stay bent the whole time. So it's going to lift back behind you and lower back down to a hover. This works the back of the leg, and by keeping the knee in this really bent position, it helps us work the leg a little bit more. So try not to straighten the leg as you go back. So keep it bent as you lift your leg up. We got it. So let's just breathe through it. Take an exhale as you lift, and an inhale as you lower. Breathe out, breathe in. And main thing to be safe here in this exercise is that as we move the leg, we try not to move the back. So you know how we started moving the back? We're doing the opposite now. Now our back is completely still. So it's just important to keep that lower back safe. You guys are doing great. Let's do three more. Last three. Starting to feel it. And two. Last one for a one. Okay, bring the knee down. Continue to keep some weight in that left hand. We're now working the outer hip. So we'll turn a bent left knee open to the left and then lower it down. Lift it out to the side, lower it down. Now, as you lift your leg up, do your best not to lean away from the leg. Okay, so stay still in that upper body as we do this. Okay, so let's breathe out as we lift. Breathe in as we lower. Exhale up. Inhale down. The sneaky thing is starting to feel that supporting leg, right? The one we're kneeling on, it's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Last three. And two, and one. Set the knee down, walk it up, shake the wrists out. Okay, we'll do the exact same thing over on the other side. So come back to all fours. Right heel comes into your tush with your foot flex. Now I'm going to show you this from the supporting side now, so I can give you a little cue here. As we move the working leg, We'll try not to lean over into the supporting side like this. Keep your center right between your hands. 
So as you're ready, lift that right leg straight back behind you and then lower the right knee down. We exhale, lift, inhale, lower. Breathe out to lift, breathe in to lower. If you feel your back moving, then make the lift of your leg a little smaller. And so big movement doesn't necessarily mean it's better, especially in Pilates. Those really small movements are what really get those muscles burning here. Breathe out to lift, breathe in to lower. And so we are working the back of that right leg now. Really, this is a full body move. Arms are working, abs are working, hips are working, the back is working. So you're getting everything in this one. And let's go for three more right here. For three. And two. And last one. Four, one. Now set the knee down just for a second. So this happens even more, the leaning, when we do the leg lift to the side. So when I do my fire hydrant to the right, be careful of leaning over to the left, right? So keep your body in the center as you turn the right leg out to the right and then lower it down. The leg is still in that bent shape, but now when we lift the leg, it's going out to the side. So the right knee points to the right wall. And I'm doing my best to keep my back still to stay safe. Yep. Breathe out, lift. Breathe in, lower. And we're certainly feeling this left hip now. Let's go for four. And three. You guys got it, we're almost there. For two. And final one. Four, oh, one. Bring it down, stretch it back. Take a little child's pose, release the wrist for a second. And then let's roll it forward and come to lay down on your stomach. This will be working the back of our body, so legs long behind you. If it is okay on your back, your chest is going to hover just an inch off the mat. If this hurts your back, lay face down on your belly or prop your head up on a pillow. Reach your arms straight back behind you with your palms flat, facing the floor. Open your chest up. From here, lift the arms so the back of the hand moves towards the ceiling and lower the arms. Okay, so your option is either chest down or if you want a little more, chest is lifted just to a hover. And now we're lifting and lowering the arms. We call this one chest expansion. So just channel that energy of opening your heart, expanding on the lift of the arms, and then keeping that expansion as you lower the arms. So when the arms come back down, it doesn't look something like that. Try to keep that chest open. Let's do five more right here. For five, gaze is down so the back of the neck is long. And that's a safety tip right there to protect these, mu these muscles, these bones right here. Last three. And two. Okay, option is to keep arms and chest up or rest it if you need. We're adding the legs lifting and lowering. Straight legs lift, straight legs lower. Reach energy through your toes. Working those legs into a super straight, strong position so that there isn't any bend in the knee. You guys got it. We're gonna go for four more. Four. Breathe out to lift. Breathe in to lower. We're working our postural muscles. Last two. Last one. Release it down, good work. Press back into a child's pose and let's just shift the hips right and left. Find some fluid movement. Loosen up that low back. And then coming through center, rolling it up. Last thing on the hand is our modified plank. So we'll go starting from all fours. Now maybe this position is challenging enough for your core, so I want you to stay right here and just work to lift your belly into your body. 
If you would like more, the hands stay underneath the shoulders, the knees start to walk back. So just inch yourself back and check how does it feel in the body and make sure you don't feel any pressure in your low back. We're all here today to get a good workout but keep ourselves from getting injured. If you're feeling good, our full modified plank is knees back, hips lean forward, yet they don't sag. So that, see how that bends my low back? That's what we want to be careful about. So lift your belly, lift your hips, and from the back of my head to my knees, I'm in one line. Yeah, the line is on a diagonal, but if you stood me straight up, I'd be in a, in a straight line, I hope. <laughs> so let's take a couple breaths here, and I want you to pull your belly in. So it's not really a big action, so you and I can't usually see each other do it. It's a, a mind-muscle connection. So if that's something just really strange to you, just keep practicing, and I promise you, you'll eventually find it, feel it, embody it. Let's take 10 more seconds right here, and lift the belly. Relax the shoulders. You have five, four, good work, three, two, and one. Walk it in. Let's take a wrist stretch. Place the tops of the hands down, palms up, and gently press the fingernails into the mat. So it looks like this guy. Yeah. Ah, oh, that feels good on the wrists, huh? Woo! Okay, guys, let's move on into some side lying work. Pilates is famous for its side lying work to work the tush. So let's bring it over onto our left forearm and bend your knees so that your knees and your hips line up and your feet and your knees line up. Lift your bottom side up so you're not hanging out here watching TV, but you're in more of a working position, right? We're efforting this a bit. Lift the right leg up. The right leg will stay bent and will circle the leg around. So the movement is from here, from the hip, rather than from your knee or your foot. So the leg position is the same, and we're moving the leg in our joint, in our hip joint. Okay, these are always sneaky. You don't feel much, and then all of a sudden, you really do. <laughs> Good work, guys. Let's do five more, and then we'll reverse. In four, three, two, one. Let's take it the other way. In this position, our core is tight and our upper body is completely still so that the only thing moving is this right leg. You've got it for five, four, three, two, one. Now bring your right knee down towards your left knee and lift your foot up as much as you can. And then tap your feet together and lift your knee up as much as you can. So right knee down and lift that right foot. And then right foot down and lift that right knee. Turn the leg in and turn the leg out. Go for big range of motion. Rather than the foot being here, really try to lift it up. Okay, we'll go five more of each. Five. Good, find normal breathing. Try not to hold the breath. Three. And two. And last one. Oh, good for the hips. Okay, let's take a mermaid stretch. So left knee in line with ankle. Right knee will come back behind us. Knee in line with hip. Hold on to the right knee with the right hand and stretch that left arm up and over your side. And then we'll just flow this. Left hand down, fingers point out, right arm stretches up and over. Put it at your own pace. Take it side to side. And find breathing that works for you. So a lot of times people ask me about the breathing in Pilates and it is definitely important, but it can be confusing, I get that. So I'd say number one thing when you start Pilates is simply just make sure you're breathing. Don't worry if you take an exhale too many times or at the wrong time. Just keep breathing, because sometimes when you're newer to exercise, 
breathing isn't normal. Like I see a lot of people hold their breath and that's okay. So just work into breathing while you're moving. Last one. Okay guys, let's take it on over. You know where we're headed? To the right side. So land on that right forearm. We'll bend the knees so that they line up with the hips and the feet line up with the knees. Then bring that left leg up to hip height, keeping our upper body still. We'll circle the left leg. And so just notice that my, le my left leg is bent the whole time. Kind of like the donkey kick position from earlier. Good, so we're not extending the leg here. And we're finding the movement in the hip. Like we're stirring a bowl of brownies in our hip socket. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I pride myself in good analogies, but I don't know if that was one. <laughs> Couple more right here. And like we just talked about a second ago, just breathe. In and out. We're making it through this workout. You've got five, four, three, two, one. Let's take it in the other direction. So same exact thing, just reverse the way you were circling your leg. Good. Stay strong in the upper body so that we don't sink into this right shoulder. Give me five more, then we'll move on to our last move in this side lying position. Four, three, two, one. Knee taps in and we lift that left foot high. Heel taps down, we lift that left knee high. Turn it in and turn it out. Knees together, feet apart. Feet together, knees apart. Turn it in. Turn it out. You're almost there. Let's do five more of each. We've got five, four, three, two, one. Finish it up. And release. Okie dokie. So mermaid on the other side. Right knee in line with ankle. And then the left knee comes back in line with your hip. Hold the left knee with the left hand. Reach your right, right, arm up, right arm up, grow tall, and stretch it on over to the left. And just relax those shoulders. And then wave your body up, right hand over to the right, left arm stretches up and over. Now let's just flow through it and breathe. Take these stretches, take the time during the stretches to relax your mind and your muscles. Big breath in and a deep breath out. Opening up the side of the body and breathing into it. Let's take a few more here and we will be moving on to lying on our back, which is a famous Pilates thing that we get to lie down while we are working out. And that sounds very enjoyable. <laughs> Let's do three more right here for three. And two. And last one. Good work, guys. Let's bring it all the way up and let's lay down on our backs. If you have any neck strain at all, you could put a pillow underneath your head to make this more comfortable. And while you're laying here, just shake the neck out, shake the shoulders out, try to relax into the mat. And when we do our core work, I want us to work in a position where our, where our whole back in the mat are sandwiched together. So that if you were trying to slide your hand underneath your back, you would not be able to. So let's do that together. Breathe out and pull your back to the floor. Now there is no spaces underneath my back and the mat. So we're glued down. And that is an important safety tip for when we work our core, that we're not putting the pressure in our low back. So it's just a little bit of extra support for you. Bring your hands behind your head. Let's work into an abdominal crunch. So the main thing here is that it is not from your head like so. 
This is going to definitely hurt the neck. So what I want you to do is lift your head up one inch, hands are behind the head, and now rest your head in your hands. So I'm completely holding the weight of my head. Now lift your chest up off the mat. And then lower back down to just hovering the head. Lift your chest up again so your back leaves the mat, your upper back. And then lower down. Okay, so as we lift up, I should feel my shoulder blades, the upper back of my body, lift away from the floor. And then when I lower down, my shoulder blades touch. Now when I lift my chest up, that's why my head goes up higher, but it is not because I am pushing my head forward with my hands or because I am saying like yes with my head. I'm not doing any of that. Another little thing you can do is make a fist with that hand, one of, one of your hands, other hand has the head, and put it in between your chin and your chest. So when you lift up into your crunch, you can't crunch your fist, right? There's that same space between, let's rest the head all the way down for a second, there's that same space between your chin and your chest the whole time. So exhale, lift up from this laying down position, moving your chest up, and then lower down. And keep that fist there for a couple more. So lift the chest and lower the chest. So keeping your fist there is going to prevent you from moving your head, or else you'd crush your arm. <laughs> let's do three more. We've got three, Head is heavy in the hand. Two. Last one. One. Good. Rest it all the way down. Just shake the neck out. And if you feel it a lot in your neck, just you know, do a couple reps and just try to understand the alignment of it and build on. With time, you totally get it, I promise you. But what do they say? Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So just be gentle with yourself, don't push it, you'll get there. So let's look into working the lower abs. So this is the really important one to keep the low back down. So glue your low back to the floor, there's no space. Legs come up to tabletop, and maybe you're already like, whoa, I am feeling it. So hold this position and pull the low back down, and when you need to take a break, take a break. Otherwise, we'll do a little bit of movement here. Inhale, your right toes will dip towards the floor, but when my leg is lower, my back is still not moved, and then lift the right leg back up over the hip. Let's alternate legs. Lower the left knee down a few inches, and then lift the leg. Breathe in as you go down. Breathe out as you come up. If when you lifted your legs up, your head is here, you need to support your head, because we don't want it straining, right? So make sure your neck feels completely relaxed here as we work the legs and the lower abs. Inhale down, the back stays on the mat, exhale lift. When your leg is low, pull your tummy in even more. You guys are doing great. Let's go for three more. For three, and two, and one. And then just set the feet down and windshield wipe your knees. Small twist in the low back. Side to side, loosen things up. We're feeling good, it's full body. <laughs> We're finishing up with the abs and then one of my favorites, a pelvic curl. Okay guys, we are going to do the hundreds. Plant your feet hips distance apart in parallel. Belly button presses into the low back. Arms are by your side, strong like poles. And we'll pump the arms, straight arms, so we're moving from the shoulders. And you can stay right here. If you're feeling good, you can lift the chest up. Distance between the chin and the chest, and we continue to pump the arms. So we're going to take an inhale and an exhale. <sighs> Extend the breath, long inhale, long exhale. <sighs> if you feel strain in your neck, relax the head and work the breath. Inhale long, 
exhale long. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. You guys got it. We'll go three more rounds. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Last two. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Last one. Inhale fully. Exhale fully. And then release it down and shake the head out right and left. Amazing. Okay, let's take it into our pelvic curl. So, tilt your tush into the floor really heavy and now we have a little gap in our low back. Then, roll your hips up toward your chest, roll up like a wave and glide your back off the floor. And then roll it back down to the mat, find a little arch in the low back. Press the low back down, roll up and roll down. So this one should hopefully feel pretty good. Think of it as your back doing a wave. Roll up and roll down. Or is that the, the move that people did on their stomach? You know what I'm talking about? So that's kind of what your back is doing here, but not so aggressively. <laughs> roll up and roll down. Let's breathe through this. Exhale, spine rolls up. Inhale, spine rolls down. Now to keep your back and neck and head safe, when you lift up, we're only going up about midway. So right below your chest. Not so high up where we send weight into the neck. That will irritate your neck. So just be conscious of that. Like I had mentioned earlier, bigger, not better. Let's go for two more. Roll up and peel down. Last one. Breathe out and breathe in. Reach those arms all the way overhead and take a big stretch through the arms, touch the wall behind you, and then lengthen your legs, press your back into the mat, and let's roll up to a seat, chin towards the front of the room, and roll yourself up. Amazing work, guys. You did it, we're going to stretch it out now. So let's find a butterfly position. This feels really good in the front of the hips. So bottoms of the feet will come together. If this feels really tight in your hips, you can move your feet a little further forward or you can sit on a pillow to give your back a little bit more height. That might make you feel a little bit more comfortable. So just find what feels best in your body. There's not a wrong answer. And then gently, you can lean into it if that feels good to you. And let's breathe. Like I said, just focus on consciously breathing, focusing on the breath, but don't worry so much about a specific technique. It'll come, I promise. Okay, let's walk the hands to the left. And then walk the hands to the right. Roll up through center. Let's do one of my all-time favorite hip stretches. So you'll bring your right knee in line with your ankle. And then you'll cross your left leg, kind of like, like shins distance apart. If this is super tight, cross your ankles closer together. If you have a little bit more flexibility, you can move the feet apart. And then we'll walk it forward. And let that back just round and release. Taking these couple moments as we stretch to be proud of what you accomplished. You know, Pilates is not just exercise. It's also a lot of mind work. It's a lot of really thinking about what the body is doing. So it, it's taxing there as well. So give yourself a hand for, for the effort you put forth. Walk it in and 
and swap your legs. So bring the other leg to the front, cross where it felt good on your body, and move into the stretch, and gently release. And with these last couple moments, maybe just close your eyes, and sit with your body. As you take your next inhale, let's bring it all the way up. Give yourself a hand. You guys did it. 30 minutes, beginner, full body Pilates. I'm super proud of you. If you needed to take breaks, that is totally fine. It's all about showing up. Maybe one time you're able to do the whole thing and then the next time you're just more tired and you need to take breaks. That's okay, just honor where you're at. Consistency is everything. It's okay to take a moment, take a water break, pause it. Maybe you do half the workout and then you grow and you add a minute or two every week. Just meet yourself where you're at. That's my biggest advice. So thank you for joining me today. I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. It is completely free. It just supports me. And it also lets you know if I have any new releases. So be sure to click that notifications bell. It will let you know when I have new videos coming out. And I look forward to working out, working out with you another time. I hope you have a fabulous day. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.